Welcome back to the Hum Baby Baseball channel, and today I'll be talking about my top 10 Division I college baseball programs going into the 2024 season. This is not the official ranking, but my own personal ranking based on the current rosters as we enter 2024. But obviously, there's always some huge surprises, so who knows what programs will be competing at the end of the season to make it to Omaha for the College World Series. If you enjoy this video, feel free to go subscribe to my second channel, Hum Baby Prospects, where I'll be covering the college baseball season with live streams, play-by-play, -play, and prospect videos. And I'll also be doing a top D2 program ranking over there in the coming days. So now let's get into today's video. I have a few honorable mentions. These are some solid programs that have a chance to make a deep run in 2024. We have Tennessee, led by starter Drew Beam. They lost quite a bit in the draft, but also have a lot of good offensive weapons, like the incoming transfer, Billy Amick from Clemson. Texas, a team with an amazing one two punch at the top of the rotation with Tanner Witt and LeBaron Johnson. South Carolina, who had an amazing run last year, and they have power hitting Ethan Petrie returning, along with some good solid arms. Clemson, who just missed the list, but definitely have a ton of talent. They lost a lot in the draft, and they lost the aforementioned Billy Amick. The lineup is now full of mostly transfers and freshmen, but there are some returning stars, such as outfielders Will Taylor and Cam Canarella, who both absolutely raked last year, hitting 362 and 388, respectively. And newcomers include Alden Mathis, who was drafted by the Orioles after hitting 344 with 10 bombs in 2022. And then Stanford, my favorite team, and they missed out on the top 10 because they just lost so much in the draft. Quinn Matthews, Ryan Bruno, Tommy Troy, all gone, and then Braden Montgomery transferred to Texas A&M. Malcolm Moore will be back, and there's a lot of good-looking transfers and freshmen, but it's going to be tough to make up for all the amazing talent that went pro or transferred. So now let's get in to my top 10. Number 10, Texas A&M. Unfortunately, I have to mention it again, Braden Montgomery. He transferred from Stanford to Texas A&M and will bring his talents to College Station after hitting 336 with 17 bombs last year for Stanford. And the Aggies also picked up Ali Camarillo from Cal State Northridge, another guy who can simply rake. He hit 371 with an OPS over 1,000 last season. And that's just a couple of many transfers coming over to Texas A&M, including Jackson Appel, who can absolutely rake. And they'll be joining forces with returning slugger Jace LaViolette. The pitching staff is solid, especially with newcomer Caden Wilson, a dominant arm out of Missouri. And overall, the offense looks more than strong enough to make up for any shortcomings in the pitching staff. Number nine, Oregon State. Next up is the Oregon State Beavers. We're sort of the opposite of Stanford. They have a ton of talent returning and incoming and only a couple key players departing. Of course, there's Travis Bazana, who will likely be a top five pick in the draft this year. He hit 374 with a 1,122 OPS last season. He'll be back in the lineup, and he's just one of many who can simply hit on this team. Each member of the outfield, Turley, McDowell, and Casper, hit at least 300 with on-base percentages of at least 400. You have freshman Trent Carraway, who should be the starting third baseman, and he was one of the best hitters in high school last year, breaking all kinds of records with power and just pure hitting ability. And there will be plenty of returning pitchers as well, and some interesting transfers like Aiden May from Arizona, whose stuff is absolutely filthy, but the Oregon State offense is what's really scary and propels them into the top 10. Number eight, Virginia. After going 50 and 15 last season with an appearance in the College World Series, the Cavaliers are looking strong again in 2024. Anthony Stefan and Luke Hansen, both hitting machines, will be returning to the lineup, as will power hitting catcher Ethan Anderson, who hit 375 with 15 bombs. It'll be tough to replace guys like Jake Geloff and Kyle Teal and Ethan O'Donnell, who were all drafted, but one incoming freshman to watch is Henry Ford. Not sure if he's related to the Ford family, but this is a powerful six foot four shortstop with quick hands and an explosive bat. Also, a D3 transfer from Salisbury, catcher and DH Jacob Ferentz will get an opportunity as a graduate student after hitting 364 with 14 homers his senior year. Virginia lost a lot of pitching, but Jay Woolfolk will attempt the transition from closer to starter in order to bolster the rotation, it's also going to feature Brad Hodges and Evan Blanco, both who pitched well last year. The bullpen looks sharp after several promising transfers, including Blake Barker, who had an even two ERA with an 11.3 per nine strikeout rate at Division II Seton Hill last year. Number seven, North Carolina, a team that's ranked lower on most lists, but I think they might be underrated, and it's North Carolina. Vance Honeycutt, 
who had first overall pick buzz at one point, is back after a bit of a down year. In 2022, he crushed 25 homers and stole 29 bases. But last year, hit just 12 homers with 19 steals. But the good news is he improved his on-base percentage and strikeout rate. And I'm expecting everything to come together this year for Honeycutt. He's also one of the best defenders in the country. Joining him in the lineup will be a lot of solid hitters who know how to get on base, including Casey Cook, Patrick Alvarez, Hunter Stokely, and Jackson Vanderbrake, who all had on-base percentages over 400. Alberto Osuna, who smashed 20 homers in 2022, is also back. And Parks Harbor, who smashed 18 last year, will be transferring in from Georgia. And then you have freshman catcher Luke Stevenson, who hit 529 with 17 homers and 58 RBIs his senior year in high school, slated to be their starting catcher. And then you have the bullpen stacked with weapons like Dalton Pence and Matt Poston, while two absolute studs, Volger Boaz and Jason DeCarl, will enter the rotation after dominating their respective high school leagues. And then last but not least, the powerful six foot five. Jake Knapp will be back as their Friday night starter. So overall, this is a well-rounded team. I expect to make a strong push towards Omaha. Number six, TCU. Coming in at number six is the TCU Horned Frogs, who had several key freshmen contribute last year, including catcher Carson Bowen and shortstop Anthony Silva. They were both phenomenal and should be even better this year. And the lineup has plenty more threats, such as senior first baseman Curtis Bryan, transfer student and DH Peyton Tolley, and incoming freshman Chase Brunson, who hit 429 with nine doubles and eight homers his senior year. He was drafted by the Blue Jays in the 18th round but instead he'll be at TCU. They don't have one prolific power hitter who's gonna hit 25 home runs plus, but they have a ton of solid hitters with good pop who know how to get on base. Tolley can also pitch and went nine and three for Wichita State last year. He should join the rotation alongside the always solid Cole Klecker and another transfer, Ben Hampton from West Virginia. The bullpen has plenty of depth and other starting options as well. And overall, this isn't a team full of top 10 picks, but it has few weak spots and should be ready for another great season in 2024. Number five, Vanderbilt. While most of the previous teams on this list have been dominated by offense, the Vanderbilt Commodores have the edge with their incredible pitching staff. Starters Grayson Carter, Carter Holton, and Devin Futrell are all returning as well as the young Andrew Dutkanik IV, who was ranked as the third best right-handed arm in the country by perfect game in 2022. He missed most of last year due to injury, but should be back and healthy this year. And there are a ton of impressive incoming arms to boost the bullpen, like Sawyer Hanks, who had a 2.84 ERA with Air Force last season and struck out 70 batters in 50 innings. They took a hit offensively after losing Enrique Bradfield and RJ Shrek, but there's an incoming freshman who is Nebraska's Gatorade Player of the Year, and it's Camden Kojal, who has an extremely advanced approach, great bat-to-ball skills, and along with Jonathan Vastine and Davis Diaz, they should provide more than enough offense for that amazing pitching staff. And also look out for transfer student Jaden Davis from Samford, who hit 358 with nine homers and a 452 on base last year. So overall, Vanderbilt is a very strong squad with a deep pitching staff and several potent offensive weapons. Number four, LSU. In at number four is the 2023 College World Series champion, LSU Tigers. Why are they not higher? Well, both the first and second overall picks in the MLB draft we're both Tigers. Paul Skeens and Dylan Cruz are now gone, and 11 total players signed with pro teams, including their number two starter, Ty Floyd. But the biggest offensive threat has to be third baseman Tommy White, who smashed 24 bombs last year with a 374 average, and he has a chance to get picked in the top 10 in the draft this year. The pitching staff looks strong with Thatcher Hurd returning. There are several incoming transfers like Gage Jump from UCLA, Luke Holman from Alabama. And while this team doesn't quite look as strong as last year, they have more than enough to make another run and try to repeat. Number three, Florida. The Florida Gators are stacked again in 2024 despite losing two of their best players to the draft in Wyatt Langford and Houston Waldrop. Two-way star Jack Caglione will return after smashing 33 homers last season, and the pitching staff will be mostly returning, including Kate Fisher and Caglione himself, who went 7-4 with a 4.34 ERA. Their closer, Brandon Neely, is back as well, along with several reinforcements transferring in, but a big wild card will be the 6'5 freshman pitcher, Liam Peterson, who had a 1.78 ERA with 73 strikeouts and 39 innings his senior year in high school. A strong season from him could propel Florida back into the College World Series Finals, but this time they might win it all. 
Number two, Arkansas. Coming in at number two, we have the Arkansas Razorbacks, who have one of the best rotations in college baseball. First team All-SEC starter Hagen Smith will be back as the ace. And the top starter from Texas Tech, Mason Molina, is transferring in after going 6-2 with an 11.7 per 9 strikeout ratio. Brady Tigert, who had a 3.2 ERA last season, should start as well. And if another starter is needed, freshman Gabe Gakel might be up to the task. He was the second best high school pitcher in the large state of California, according to Perfect Game. And he has insanely good stuff, elite spin rates. And if he doesn't start, he should be a key member of the Arkansas bullpen, along with returning closer Gage Wood. To help score runs, the Razorbacks brought in several talented transfer students to replace lost talent. You have Jack Wagner and Hudson White, both bringing power and on-base talent to a lineup that features returning stars Ben McLaughlin and Peyton Holt. Holt fell just eight points shy of hitting 400 last year. But coming in at number one has to be Wake Forest, who reached the College World Series last year and looked just as strong, if not stronger, this year. Potential first overall pick Nick Kurtz is back after hitting 353 with 24 bombs last season. And to give him some extra help in the lineup, Wake Forest is bringing in several big bats from other schools, such as Seaver King, who hit 411 with 11 bombs last season for Division II Wingate. Then hit 424 with an OPS over 1,000 in the Cape Cod League, proving he is for real. Also transferring in is DH Cam Gill, who hit 368 with 41 RBIs last year with Wofford. But Wake Forest has some of the best pitchers in the country returning, all with sub-3 ERAs, Josh Hartle, Michael Massey, and Cole Rowland. Hartle went 11-2 with a 2.81 ERA and has great stuff combined with incredible command. And to put this team over the top, former Tennessee starter Chase Burns, one of the best in the country, has transferred to Wake Forest, giving them a pitching staff that might even be better than that of the Razorbacks. And they also have incredible defensive players like Merrick Houston at shortstop, a plus defender who will look to bounce back offensively after a rough 2023. Overall, Wake Forest has it all. Power, pitching, defense, pure hitting, and they come in at number one on my list of the top 10 D1 college programs entering 2024. And that does it for today's video. Let me know your thoughts down below. Make sure to go check out Humbaby Prospects. I'll have videos like this more often over there, but I wanted to put this one here on the main channel since we're talking D1 serious college baseball right here. But I also love Division II baseball and I do a lot of Division II stuff over on Humbaby Prospects. I'll be doing a top 10 ranking for those programs as well and some team previews. I'll have a Stanford